This episode of the Bar Star Podcast is proudly brought to you by Louisville Music Studios. Located at 4220 Trio Avenue in Louisville, Kentucky. Zip code is 40219. And the phone number for booking is 502-693-7462. Louisville Music Studios is awesome. That is where my home base is for my new secret project. And uh, they have been amazing. The staff is amazing. David Payne has worked on a really, really cool concept and brought it to life. Uh, And he is constantly making changes over there. It's an awesome place. You guys need to go check it out because not only is it an awesome place, but they're giving away something for free. David and I had a conversation and he decided to extend our offer with a two-hour minimum. If you call that number for booking to book some rehearsal time, you will get your first hour for free. Free shit. Who doesn't like free shit? We're musicians. Most of us are broke. So check them out. If you have not checked out Louisville Music Studios yet, you need to. Like I've said before, you can go in and rehearse for a couple hours. You can rehearse for an afternoon. You can set up a monthly rental so you can have a home base to work on I don't know secret projects whatever you want to so Louisville Music Studios is awesome you need to go check them out staff is amazing the gear is amazing the room is amazing I love them they love me and uh, everything is just sunshine and fucking puppies oh yeah enjoy this episode of the show the Bar Star Podcast, hosted by Stephen O'Reilly is a podcast about working musicians their friends and their opinions Stephen is a musician in Louisville, Kentucky, who has... Wait a second. This guy's a drummer, not a real musician? Somebody gave a drummer a microphone for his voice? The hell? Unreal. Unbelievable. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Bar Star Podcast. I am your host, Stephen O'Reilly. I want to thank you guys for coming back once again to hang out with my silly ass. I appreciate it. I appreciate the ratings and the reviews and uh, sold a couple t-shirts. You guys are awesome. Thank you for the support. It just puts money back in the show because I bring the show to you every week for free and uh, any little bit helps. So I appreciate it. I hope everybody had a good week. I hope everybody is doing well. And as always, I hope you guys went out and did some shit. Please take a minute to check out my sponsor, Prophecy Inc., located in the (gasps) Highlands in Louisville, Kentucky. And make sure you check out my new sponsor, Louisville Music Studios, located at 4220 Trio Avenue. Uh, Go into Prophecy Inc., mention the Bar Star Podcast, you will get 10% off your tattoo by any artist in the shop. Call the number for booking at Louisville Music Studios with a two-hour minimum. Mention the Bar Star Podcast. You'll get your first hour for free. So there you go. There's some free shit for you. And uh, I'm done shilling shit. Shilling shit. Shit shilling. Whatever. Uh, I got a cool episode today. It was recorded at NAM a few weeks ago uh, in front of a Starbucks at in the Hilton in Anaheim, which was all swanky. Oh, my God. It was so swanky. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's my buddy, Andrew Loggins, who Andrew lives in Atlanta and him and I have known each other for a long time. When I first started teaching, I taught for him and his wife, Melissa at their school called music authority, which is in Cumming, Georgia, which is 20, 25 minutes North of Atlanta. But anyway, it was kind of weird because we've been trying to hook up and do the show and you guys know I'm technology stupid. So most of my shows Actually, all of my shows are in person. I'm going to eventually try the Skype thing and all that bullshit, but I'm I'm a little scared because I'm dumb. But it was kind of funny that we ended up hooking up to do the podcast in Anaheim, California. I live in Louisville. He lives in Atlanta, and we meet in An- Anaheim, whatever. Crazy. But it was really cool. One thing, uh, circle back to last week's episode with Stacy and I talking about the NAMM show. One thing we forgot to tell you guys was the Jesus protesters. They were cool. They really weren't cool. They were actually annoying as hell. But I thought it was kind of smart of them to go do their protests and their have their signs and talk into their loudspeakers and all that kind of stuff and say that everybody's going to hell in a 
convention center full of just dirty, nasty musicians. So I have to, I took my hat off for him a little bit. I was like, well, it's pretty fucking smart. Good job. I hear you. So we we forgot to tell you about that. That was pretty funny. They were everywhere and they were out there all weekend. Uh, some small groups and then some bigger groups. Uh, one lady was crying into her megaphone. It was pretty funny. And I'm not picking on anybody for their convictions. You you do what you want. It's just let's not be so fucking over dramatic, shall we? So anyway, uh, let's get to my conversation I had with Andrew. I think you guys are going to dig it. Andrew's a good dude. Uh, he's a lot of fun, and his wife is awesome. And uh, I reference in this show that she will kick the shit out of me, and she will. I'm scared to death of Melissa. I love you, girl. I'm fucking scared of you. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Check out this uh, conversation I had with my buddy Andrew Loggins. Do I have like a theme music or something? Well, it's recording now, but yes, you will have a theme music eventually. Do I get to pick my theme music? No. No, because everybody wants to pick shit that I have to pay for. No. My se- I have another question. I- Do I keep it PG? Uh, fuck no. <laughs> Does that uh, answer your question? I'm so used to keeping it Disney. You do not. Have we to, are in Anaheim. Yes, you do not have to keep. I see what you did there. That's, that was pretty cute. No, you do not have to keep it PG unless you really, really want to. But uh, for those of you at him, for my loyal Bar Star listeners, I don't have loyal listeners. That's a fucking bullshit lie. Uh, we are in Anaheim. Uh, we are sitting in front of Starbucks in what hotel is this? I don't even know. A fancy one. Uh, it is. Fa- it is fancy, isn't it? It's very, very fancy. Uh, I am hanging out with my buddy. Who I haven't seen in person in a long time. Yo. Uh, yeah, what's your name again? Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm hanging out with Andrew Loggins. I used to work for you. You were the first Mm-mm. person I talked no, to. No, we both worked for my wife. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. You're right. <laughs> that's true. Uh, you are, Okay, so your wife owns... <laughs> A music store in Cumming, Georgia, and you just work there. Yeah. Yeah. You um, and you, my official title is janitor. Actually, your name badge does say janitor. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, you and your awesome wife, Melissa, own Music Authority in Cumming, Georgia. Correct. Uh, and when I met you, and I wrote about this in my book, uh, when I met you, you needed a sub for a teacher that had, was sick or what the hell ever it was. And I fell in love with teaching, and you fell in love with me, and we ran away and got married. This is true. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Um, but that's how I... Fact check. Fact check. That is how I got into teaching, was doing a sub job for you at Music Authority. And you and I have been friends ever since, which is cool, because when I moved to Louisville from Atlanta, you didn't, you weren't one of the people that got mad at me. Nope. So, all the history out of the way... I was disappointed, but I'd been through Louisville before... Mm-hmm. So I was a little disappointed that you were going there. Well, I, I'm the st- world's a very big place. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I was going to slam on Louisville too, but now I can't because it's like I've been there 12 years. It's home now. Yeah, the world is a big place. I'm just kidding. It took a long time to get here. Holy uh, it's shit. Like the world is a big place and Louisville's one of them. That, you're right. You're right. Uh so, how is the store? How is everything going? It's good. Um, I mean, I, significant growth. I mean, I don't want to say that we've grown since you've left. Oh, you have. But we have. Yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't do shit when I was there because I didn't know anything. I was still learning stuff. Well, so was I. That's true. I mean, we were, we were all, like, we were young. We were I babies. Mean, yes, I was a child. I was... I mean, when I say that I got married when I was 23 and I bought a business the next year... I say that out loud, and I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I would ever suggest to someone. I was like, what were you thinking? That is crazy, because when I, we were trying to figure it out earlier, I think, I've been in Louisville, next month will be 12 years. So, I taught for you, I started teaching for you at least 13 years ago. Yeah. So it would have been, been like 04 Right. No, no, closer to oh five, oh six. Because gotcha. I graduated AIM in oh six, and I left in oh seven. Gotcha. Because well, I then. le I went to Louisville, or I moved to Louisville right after I graduated. Okay. I graduated AIM in oh six. Gotcha. So I guess it would have been the beginning of oh five. Because I was with you for a little over a year, right? Yep. 
I don't know, man. Wait, we both have shitty memories, and we're trying to t- look at us doing math. <laughs> I did not know there was going to be a quiz. I didn't either. I could have prepared if I would have known. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have prepared. You'd have forgot everything. I hope all of your, uh, your internet listeners don't mind me making this up. Why? They listen to me. They know everything's <laughs> fucking made up. That O'Reilly guy, he doesn't remember anything. He fucking sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay, so seriously. So your store is growing, and you took over the building next to you and built a venue in yep, your... we did. Tell me about that, because I actually genuinely want to know. Well, so one of the things that we realized is um, through the recession, right, like 09, 2010, 2011... You know, one of the things that we realized is that you just have to pay attention, right? Like the retail started to decline. It started to go internet. Uh, but one of the things that did not decline was education. Right. And what we realized is that people were willing to pay for education. Right. Even if it's uh, sort of an extracurricular education like music education, sort of a, you know, uh, maybe like a luxury, even considered a luxury for, it, it for a is. lot it's, of people, right? It is. It's considered a luxury item to a lot of people. I've always said that. Yeah. So... Um, one of the things we noticed is even without us trying, like even with, with, with us making horrible, wrong, terrible decisions, like our, <laughs> you know, this is, <laughs> I love that. Carry I mean, on. we were right. You know, like we were, you know, I'm an, un, I basically have no education. My wife has got a college education. I basically have barely a high school diploma. Um, and here we are trying to, you know, basically run a business, um, keep teachers paid. Right. You know what I mean? Like keep students in lessons right so we noticed that this started to um to happen and grow even without us putting a lot of emphasis on it right so um one of the things that we started to do and uh you know all of this is it's it's information that's we discuss all the time right curriculum right so we had to, we developed a curriculum um the, we developed a performance program associated sort of the curriculum and the performance programs are associated together right? right and we started making sure that the teachers that were on staff try to understand this this idea what the what the values are so the way that I learned music or the way that maybe you and other people learn music was right you go to the guitar shop you walk to the basement and a dude with purple dreadlocks says <laughs> what do you want to learn today Sonny <laughs> Right? That was my experience. No, you're that, right. that happened, you're right? right? You're right. So one of the things that we kind of, if you're aware of the changing times, changing culture, change in, in everything, that that's not going to work anymore, right? Right. You know, we have the internet on our phone. We're sitting in front of the Starbucks making a show that anybody will be able to hear. Absolutely. So that is not the same. So what we realized is we had to provide a different experience because the culture, the climate is all changing. Oh, yeah. Ev- absolutely. Everything's changing. So um, that became sort of our identity was based upon that sort of thing. Like when a, when a parent comes in, and this may be, maybe this isn't exactly what you're asking, but it's going to lead up to your question. I know it maybe seems like I'm going to spend like three minutes talking about everything else except for answering your question. There's However. No, there's no time limit, my friend. Okay. But I do want to answer your question. There's battery limit, but no time limit. <laughs> There's an outlet right here. We'll I plug up if we need to. You're, you're cute. You think I have a charger for this damn thing? <laughs> What's the matter with you? So anyway, carry on. Uh, so we developed a curriculum. So when your child came in, they were basically going to say, my kid wants to take guitar lessons, drum lessons. Can you tell me what you have to offer? And now we can say, yes, here's nice. what here's what you're going to pay for. So this is not like ordering off of a menu. There's not options. Like, here's what you're going to get. Right. Here's what you're going to experience in your lesson. At this point in time, you should see your child perform, right, in some capacity, whether it's a recital, um, or an ensemble performance, uh, a school-sponsored performance, some outlet for performance. Right. Um, you know, and, and really creating what, what we our hashtag is Music Authority Family. So our vision is to create a family that people can have access to through music. Absolutely. It should be that way. I, I dig that. I like that. So... About four years ago, we were I was sitting on the little rehearsal stage, which you probably remember in the in the in the little rehearsal room. I do. And I thought to myself, man, you know how awesome it would be is if, if when our neighbors ever moved out, we could we could build out, you know, and it was like because at the time there was a little like uh like a little I don't know what it was, really weird and sketchy, like Asian novelty shop. You could go in and buy like Asian trinkets and stuff from around the world. It was really kind of bizarre. Right. And uh well, 
one day they were gone, like left in the middle of the night. <laughs> it's like we show up to work the next morning and guess who's not there? Your neighbors. Yes, exactly. So I had talked to our landlord. I said, hey, you know, if that spot ever comes open, please just let us know. We, we, we're interested in expanding. And they were really good and uh, let us uh, let us pretty much have access to it immediately. We expanded. We built three more teaching studios, and we we built a, a larger performance room. Nice. Uh, the large the performance room has a really huge stage. Like it's like twelve by twenty four. It's a fourteen by twenty four. Yeah, twelve by twenty four. It's huge. And it is big. <laughs> it's a lot of space. It is a lot of space. We have a real B three and a Leslie. Um, there's a little drum riser. It's like hold a, up. It's a real hold, thing. Hold up. Yeah. An actual real Hammond B3. An actual real Hammond B3. And Where a Leslie. Where did you get that? So, um, my and dad. And you got the Leslie cabinet with the Leslie too? Yes. It turns and does the whole thing. You. I'm not even talking to you anymore. The show's over. Um, <laughs> but the room. <laughs> nope. I don't care. <laughs> you can come see it. I will. I'll, I'll send you. I'll come sleep with it. <laughs> Not in a gross way, ew. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Where did you get that stuff? From? So my that's, father, my it's not easy to find. No, my father, um, my father was a minister in a church, and they sold the church, and the people who bought the church did not want the Leslie, so my dad needed a place to put it. Perfect. So <laughs> he said, "Do you want this?" And I said, "Yes, I do." Why? Yes, yes, I do want that. <laughs> <laughs> they actually offered me. They had a Yamaha grand piano, and I was like, "I don't know. I don't have a place to put it." I guess it's a big stage, but it's not that big. Yeah, it's not that big. So anyway, um, yeah, to get to the point, it's been uh, it's been pretty remarkable having an, more of an on-site venue, right? Where you can actually have access to it's kind of removing that barrier of entry to having a venue, right? So it's not well, let's find a coffee shop, or let's find a restaurant, or let's find somebody. Oh, it's like no, 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 because like I'm. The kind of guy that I am, I'm like I don't want anyone's help. I, like, I want to, I want it to be all in house. You know, I want it to be all kind of. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think I th you said something. I don't want exactly. it to depend on other people because other people are unreliable and they don't understand the vision most of the time. No, and you just said something that I was going to say is in house is always. I think personally, with what you're trying to do, with, and with a lot of shit too, but with what you're trying to do, I think in house is always the best way to go, because you not only are you obviously duh hence the name keeping everything in house but you don't have to worry about variables that can fuck up what your plan is because sure. it's literally all there you don't have right. to worry about anything i like in house and i think the way you've done it is smart sure i mean the pictures i've seen obviously i haven't been down there but you and i talk and i've seen pictures and all that kind of shit i think you're doing it right i, I hope per so personally i, I mean do. it makes sense like the thing that the thing that i've kind of had in the back of my mind for some time is you know that this is just it's just kind of our own little pirate ship, right? And I don't, I don't really care what anyone else is doing. I don't care how they're doing it, right? Like I'm just trying to approach this from being wildly pragmatic. What makes sense, right? Like I'm aware of what's working, aware of what's not working, and not really caring what other people do. Not right. really caring what the, um, the the corporate music schools are doing, and, and all of that stuff, right? Because I, my goals are to offer something that's going to transcend. Right, little Johnny going to his guitar lesson every week, because uh, look, the bottom line is I can't compete with the corporate world in, on that level, and I don't care to. Right, I'm not that kind of guy, you know. I want people to, when they come to Music Authority, I want them to feel something different that they don't get other places. Right, and and that's kind of a response to what's happening, even in technology and the way that we experience the world now through, um, you know our social media and things like that. I want it to feel like something, which is you know, kind of what I never had access to as a child. I, I get that, and I, I think one of the things I noticed, I was going to say I think something else, but I changed my mind. One of the things I noticed is a lot of the shit here at NAM this year, uh, I shouldn't say this year. I've never been to Anaheim, but I've been to NAM before. I've been to the Nashville one a few times. But a lot of the shit I'm noticing is... Uh, of a lot of virtual reality and uh, AI shit or fake shit or whatever, but right. it, there's a lot of stuff that's like they have these sticks that you can you hook up to a computer and you can play drums with just a set of sticks. It's literally air drumming. Right. Like I can't even give it my special literally on that. And it's cool, but at the same time, it's going. I'm thinking to myself. That, no, that's not teaching anybody to actual, actually play. You can't right. play an instrument like that. Sure. Um, but I think 
touching on what you were saying and what I was going to say I, earlier is I think that you're doing it right because one of the trends I noticed, and most people know that I've, I've stopped teaching, whether I go back to teaching or not is irrelevant. Um, I may or may not. I don't know yet. As of right now, I still don't miss it. But one of the things I noticed in teaching was at the end, one of the things that made me stop was the, the whole YouTube, and I can find it on sure. this channel, I can find it on that channel, but there's no connection to anything or anybody. Right. Yeah. You know, I was walking around um, this weekend with Stacy, and, and we're not done yet. Today's, actually, what is today? Friday. Friday. I think so. Yeah, we got a couple of days left, but yesterday I met Carmen Apathy, or Carmen to Peace, however you want to pronounce it. One of them pronounces it different. But it's like if you're standard or metric, it's one yeah, or the pretty other. Much. It's one or the other. But Stacy was like, who's that dude? She just didn't get it. Now, sure. I'm not picking on her, but I feel like that kind of comparison is what a lot of kids are. They just don't get it because they're not they're not there, they're not trying, they're not actually putting in the work. Right. Or the other side is they're not going somewhere that's different enough, like what you said. You come to you guys or a child comes to you guys, they're gonna get an experience. They go to Guitar Center or where the fuck ever, it's just going to be like, eh, yep, you're a number, see you later, go down there, here's your lesson. Well, and you know, like for us, even in the retail side of things, like I don't want to be Guitar Center, I don't want to be that. Right. Like if you want that, that's fine. Like I try not to be sort of negative about people who want that and it serves a purpose and that's fine. Yeah, I'm not but negative towards it either. Just in, just in anything, any type of, you know, to have an identity is the most important part. Oh, absolutely. Right? So for sure, for us, it's all been sort of a continuing evolution, and of un, for, even for us, understanding where our, what what is our identity, yep, and that's really a reflection of our, our core values, and I would it, say. And I think it should be. I, I think this is totally getting off subject, but you'll you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. I think a lot of people that start any kind of business, no matter what the hell it is, they tend to focus too much on how can we be better than when they should be focused on. How can we be different then? Does that yeah. make sense? I mean, absolutely different then. And to me, it's it's even more real. Like that's, you know, people want something that's really, really good mm -hmm. and really real. Absolutely. And that's that's kind of sort of counterintuitive, you know, because, you know, we live in a, you know, in the, in the world, which is, you know, our, you know, our little thumbnail image yeah. is not real. <laughs> no, <laughs> right? it's so, not. so, you know, the fact that, you know, which it's getting kind of the, to back to the core of humanity, so oh, to yeah. speak. You know that the human connection, the human interaction, is 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 hopefully the experiences that hope that people are going to have when they when they come to Music Authority, uh, whether it's in their thirty minute with their teacher, or whether they're in their group class, or whether it's. Um, okay, so short little example. We did a fall production last year, and it was called Gone. And it was based upon artists that have passed away. And in uh, throughout the, the, the show, we would have students either do little um, two-minute presentations about people that oh, had, cool. had an impact on them that had left. And so one of my students, his father um, got killed in Iraq. Right. So here you are, uh, this 14-year-old uh, boy doing a two-minute talk about how his father that he never met has had an impact on his life because the reason he started playing guitar was because his dad played guitar. Oh, nice. So Very it's cool. one of those things, and it's like the fact that this child, or child, he was a teenager, right, has like the fortitude and the ability to stand up and give like a real presentation on something that was heartfelt and meaningful in front of, you know, 300 people. That's important. Well, like, absolutely. That's to me, that's more important than anything else. Right. You right, because because what you alluded to was, of course, if you just want to learn how to play your favorite Metallica song, you should never, never pay for that now. No. Never pay for that. No, it, because you know, the medium has changed. So if oh, you absolutely. if you want to learn to play Inner Sandman and you don't really care about anything about else. anything, then yeah. just go to YouTube and do that, and that's absolutely. fine. But that's not what we do. Right, and that's one of the reasons to talk about me because it is my damn show. No, I'm just kidding. That's one of the reasons why I, I got frustrated with teaching is because I don't teach that way. You come to me, I'm not teaching you songs. Right. I, but I've never been like that. Sure. I've never done it. Even when I, when you guys were kind of helping me along when I first started to, to teach and I, you were teaching me how to teach and Craig and Tom and, and AIM were helping me out with all that stuff too. I figured that out early on. 
but it became more of a sticking point as YouTube got more popular and, and everything was right. available on YouTube. Well, to me, that that's where the pragmatic thing just comes in. Like, I will not make money charging people for what they can now get for free. Right. Like, that doesn't make sense. They're not going to pay for it if they can get it for free. Right. Well, and on the other and side... that's not it, right or wrong. That's just the way that it is. No, no, no. I'm saying right because I agree with you. Yeah. But also on the other side of that is... I don't like doing it because, to me, you're not learning anything. Yeah. On a t on just on a purely teaching right. level, business aside, you're not learning anything. You are just you're just kind of figuring out how to run through a tune or run through a track. I mean, so you're just be the word I'm looking for is mimicking. Sure. You're just figuring out how to mimic something. That doesn't make you a musician. It no. doesn't make you a drummer, a guitar player, a bass player, pick an instrument. And that's what frustrated me about right. teaching. That's where I got because I'm like, well, what the fuck are you here for? Sure. Do you want to learn the instrument or do you want to, quote, be cool because you can play right. Inner Sandman? Well, there's a level. There, look, I, and I just kind of think that there's a level of literacy that's involved in, 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 in not only music, but most anything, right? And Absolutely. if you look at the way a child, when they first you know, start to speak, they're, you know, they're mimicking words that they hear from their parents, right. and they're copying inflection and stuff. But then the first thing, the minute they're you know, approaching five years old, we're sending them to school. Why? So they can read and write. Right. Because we don't want them to be illiterate, okay? <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> through that whole through that whole time, what are they doing? They're exercising that communication, the verbal yep. communication. Yep. So there is a lot of you know, if you if you in one hand have academics and in the other hand you have listening and like replication, yep. then all of a sudden you have a really well rounded like musician. Oh, Somebody absolutely. that can really perform and they understand how to speak in this language and uh, yeah. It's pretty simple. No, I, I, I think it's <laughs> I mean, we're not, curing can we're not curing cancer here. No. Uh, there needs to be a cure for one, though, damn it. Um, no, you're, you're right. And I think, I think a lot of that gets lost on... I, I hate to say that it gets lost more on parents than the kids, but it kind of does because at some point parents should know better. I will say this. One of the things that we didn't... Yes, you're right. One of the things that we had no control over, and we're very, very fortunate to be in the location, the geographic location that we are... Um, over the last 10 years, but especially the last five years, we have had a huge influx of students and parents from India. Really? And yes. Over a third of what we see over 550 students a week and over a third of them are from India. And one of the things, it's a completely different culture and a completely different value on not just education, but music education. Right. They come in and it's pretty hysterical because... My um, the the Indian parents they'll come in and like after the lesson they'll want to be really they'll look at you with a very concerned look and like okay how is Rohan doing in his lesson oh no and, I, I, and I'm I like get it. I'm like hey, he's doing just fine he's up we're, we're he's been in lesson six weeks we're just fine and it's like you know the white moms don't even get out of their car so you're you right know, <laughs> it's like and and you know both are it can be in the extreme right yep. oh so, absolutely. Absolutely. So we've been very fortunate for that because, you know, as as that culture moves to our county, you know, and, and our part of the world, they socialize with one another. They they're sh they're saying, hey, my kid takes piano lessons at Music Authority. So then all of a sudden, right, their friends are coming over, you know, because they're a community amongst themselves also. Absolutely. And one of the reasons I said I get it is because one of my even though, like I said, I, I don't teach anymore. One of my students that I taught for about seven years, uh, a little kid named Charvel. Uh, Charvel was awesome. I, I taught him uh, maybe he might have missed four months worth of lessons in seven years, but that's because three years in a row he went to India for a month. Right. But they exactly. were from India, and his dad, Dalip, yep. awesome guy, the awesome family. Yep. The whole family's cool. But he was exactly that way. Yeah. He would, all right, how's Charvel doing? What do we need to do? And he's he's in, and he's super involved with the kids, which is awesome. Yeah. So that we were very fortunate for that. It had nothing to do except for just we just <laughs> were fortunate to happen to be where we were, and that's that's right. a landing spot for a lot of people that are moving from India and their, their work opportunities and school opportunities are, you know, in, in the Atlanta area. That's crazy. All yeah. right. Before we get out of here, because I don't want to keep you all day. It's okay. Because um, there's... I think we have Thai food going on tonight My uh, with some people that are... Yeah. Well, 
I'm sorry. Am, am I invited or no? no? I'm not sure. I wouldn't there's invite a, my white <laughs> trash ass either. <laughs> there's a large corp- there's a there's a large corporation that we spend a lot of money with that, that has a. Oh yeah, I'm so not invited to that. <laughs> <laughs> you said large and corporation and money. No, yeah, fuck three. Times. We spend a lot of money with a company and they want to take us out, so that's gonna happen. Oh yeah, you need to go. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my god, turn around and look at that dude. I'm not even editing this out. Look at that guy. He's fucking awesome. Is that the Crypt Keeper? It kind of looks like a young Alice Cooper. It kind of does. Oh, I saw them yesterday. Hey, at least she's got a bra on today. Good for her. Good job, honey. <laughs> it is 2019. Uh, well, It's listen, okay to wear bras I'm, in public. I'm all about large-chested <laughs> women, but I don't need to see that shit in public. Anyway, uh, plug all your shit. Where can everybody find you? Uh, MusicAuthorityInc.com. Right. Um, they can find me all over social media. Andrew Loggins, mm-hmm. uh, Facebook, Instagram. I've been tweeting some. Do Usually, you, a pretty pretty simple little silly. Mostly, I do a lot of Instagram. I do. I found myself doing more Instagram. That's what I was going to ask you. Total squirrel moment. Do you think that Twitter's worth it? Well, I think you have to spend too much time on it. Man, I don't know. Like you, it's like it's one of these things because you, you every time you turn on any sort of like. Uh, something it's who's tweeting about what but when you get on there and you're not I, you can't find I don't it. really know like I don't I'm not sure <laughs> and there's part of me which is like I think I should care but then there's part of me that's like I really don't care cuz yep, I have I get it. I have stuff to do and I have real problems yep. and and not being able to find you know a twitter handle is is not really one of them <laughs> <laughs> No I get it that's funny I <laughs> No I do I do a lot of instagram I mean we do <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. I should care, but I really fucking don't <laughs> care. I love that. That's awesome. That's some shit I'd well, say. Well, you know, if you're, you're, you're listening to all those people, they make it seem like you should care. That's true. You know what That's I mean? True. Uh, but, no, I do a lot of Instagram. Uh, do a lot of, uh, yeah, stuff through the school and the store and just whatever the I'm music doing. Music Authority is on Facebook as well, too, right? And Instagram, yes. Right, cool. Yeah, if you, you search Music Authority, Coming Georgia, you will find us. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Awesome. Andrew Loggins. Andrew, Big so, Daddy Loggins. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, no, and for those They call of me that, God of Rock. <laughs> they do, actually. I've seen that. I've seen that hashtag before. I'm not lying. Um, the For those of you in my normal area and then all my listeners in uh, Sweden. I'm huge in Sweden. The universe. The universe. No, uh, coming is right north of Atlanta. Yeah. Like 20 minutes north or whatever it is. Yeah, we're still considered Metro Atlanta. But yeah, north of north, directly north of Atlanta. Okay, awesome. Well, now know everybody knows where to find you, and I can plug all that crap in the show notes, and uh, it's all good. So, Andrew, I love your face. Love you too, man. I'm thank you for having me. Dude, for letting me ramble on. Thank you for taking. No one the time. else listens, so <laughs> no, my wife certainly does not. Well, she does not because she will kick the shit out of you. Yes, and me for yeah. that matter. I was telling my wife last night that uh, Melissa is one of the few women that I'm actually scared of. She'll beat the shit out of me. She's calmed down a lot. Yeah, okay, whatever. She'll still beat the <laughs> shit out of me. Uh, dude, I'm out of here. You're right. out of here. Peace. Let's go eat some food, and uh, yes. I love your face. Love you. Later. Hey, guys. This is Steve Owens from Fascination Street Podcast here with a very important message. I'm awesome. I bet you thought I was going to say something else, but nope. What's important here is that I am awesome. I have a podcast called Fascination Street, and it allows me to bring to my listeners some of the most fascinating stories and guests. I started this show because I truly believe that everybody has a story, and I'm fascinated to hear those stories. In the short time I've been doing this show, I've interviewed actors, directors, writers, inventors, podcasters, musicians, pro athletes, Olympic athletes, actual war heroes, even a Bond girl and a luthier, whatever the hell that is, and of course, regular people. From people who wanted to be stars but never gave it a real try, to big company CEOs and people who got to meet their favorite president. I love getting to meet and speak with people who have a story to tell. I feel like everyone does, and it's my job to get them to tell it. You never know who my next guest will be. An Academy Award winning actor, a platinum selling musician, or your own mother-in-law. But one thing is for certain, you will be fascinated by their story. So come take a walk with me down Fascination Street. You can find this show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and of course, FascinationStreetPod.com. Well, that's it, kids. That's the show for the week. 
I hope you guys dug it. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, like I said, Andrew's a good dude, a good friend of mine. Helped me when I first started teaching. And uh, not only was it good to connect with him in person because I haven't seen him in so long, it was good to have him on the show. Uh, we stay in contact all the time. We text and I shouldn't say all the time, but regularly we text and message each other and stuff like that. So it's not like we're out of touch or anything. We just haven't seen each other in person in, yeah, I don't know, 12 years, some shit like that. It's been a long time. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys dug it. Uh, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for coming back to listen to my ramblings and rantings and just nonsense that comes out of the fucking hole in my face. And uh, if you haven't already, please, 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 I beg of you good people, please subscribe to the show, rate the show, five stars, motherfucker, review the show, say, oh my God, you're so cute, and uh, just tell other people about the show. Let's grow this thing together. Uh, I know I ask you guys to do that all the time, but uh, I'm fucking serious. You guys are slacking. I really need you to fucking help. I'm just kidding. Any help you can give would be awesome. Tell a friend, tell a wrestler, tell a phone, tell a bird. I don't really care. Uh, just let's spread the word and let's grow this thing together. I am out of here. I've got some shit I got to go do. I have to, uh, to go do an audition. Really bizarre. I have not auditioned for anything in a long time. So I'm kind of freaking out about it. And I may or may not tell you guys more about it later. Who knows? We shall see. But, as I say at the end of every episode, go do some shit. Seriously, get the fuck out of here. Go look up some more stupid man pictures because I know there's a cachillion of them. I shouldn't even call them stupid man pictures because they're, they're awesome. But after a while, it just all runs together and you might need to just So until next time, I will talk at you soon.